The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. It's the who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, pressure. It is 11 p.m. a Saturday night in January 1933. Sheriff Russ Morton drives his car to the end of the well-lighted main street of Lingua, Texas, and turns onto a narrow wooden bridge that crosses the railroad yards and leads to the Negro quarter of town on the far side of the tracks. In the car with the sheriff is his deputy, Sam Billings. Both men are uneasy. Doesn't look like there's much doing across the tracks, Sam. I don't get it, Sheriff. I was over here less than an hour ago, and the cafes was packed so thick you couldn't stir them with a stick. No. Who sent out to call for us? Pedro at the Cantina Cafe. I didn't get half of what he said. He sounded scared to death. Just kept yelling to come get old Lucifer out of his place. Hmm. Old Lucifer? Yeah. Can't imagine him stirring up no trouble. Oh, no, neither can I. But, Sam, I, I don't like the look of this. Hmm. There isn't a light shown in the whole quarter. Not even in shack or shanty. Might have been a knife in, Sheriff. Oh, a knife might, might make one place go dark, but not all of them. Cantina's off left, off the next street. Nobody on the streets, not even a dog in the prowl. If old Lucifer is behind this, he sure sent everybody around for cover. Now, how can an old man like... Sheriff, look. Huh? Cantina ain't open either. Just Pedro got old Lucifer to leave without waiting for our help. Yeah, then closed up tight in a drum. Why? I can't figure it. What are we going to do now? We're going to find out what's wrong over here. Keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to comb these streets until we find a light or somebody stirring. Better reach over and back and get that shotgun. Right. Never saw nothing like this before, Sheriff. Neither have I. There's... Throw the spotlight on, Sheriff. That doorway over there. Oh, it's old Lucifer. Yeah. Stand right where you are, Lucifer. Don't move. Look! Look at him, Sheriff. Something all over his shirt and his pants and his hands. Yeah, no need to look at him twice. It's blood. What happened to you, Lucifer? What's the matter over here? It's my doing, Mr. Sheriff. All my doing. Ain't nobody to blame but me. You got blood all over you. And it doesn't look like it's your own. Who are you fighting with? Somebody in Pedro's place try to jump you? No, sir. I ain't had no trouble with nobody here. I had my trouble out to the farm where I work. Out of the farm? Yes, sir. I just walked into town a little while ago, trying to get up my nerve to turn myself in. Sheriff, I... I killed Mr. Redford. I shot him dead. What? You killed your boss? Mike Redford? Yes, sir. I done it just me. We got to arguing and I shot him dead. No wonder there ain't a light on over here. You can tell us the rest of it at the jail, Lucifer. Right now, you better get in my car fast before this news crosses the track. Yes, sir. We're in for trouble, Sheriff. Mike Redford's been mighty popular around here. Yeah. Get him back, Lucifer. Get down on the floor and stay there. Yes, sir. I'm going to drop you off on Main Street, Sam. Round up the constable and a couple of other deputies. Get them to jail as fast as you can. We may be able to keep this quiet until tomorrow. If we can, it'll give me a chance to get a few Texas Rangers in to give us a hand. The news of Mike Redford's murder struck the town on the afternoon of the following day. But by that time, Sheriff Morton had help. He was joined at the Lingwood Jail by Texas Ranger Jace Pearson. Uh, here's Lucifer's confession if you want to see it, Jace. He made a full statement when we brought him in last night. Mm. 
pretty short statement. Yeah, short and to the point. Says he had it in for Redford for a long time. Made up his mind to settle it last night. Went up the house, started the fight, and shot him. These, uh, the clothes Lucifer was wearing. Blood all over him. Yeah, the blood analyzed? Yeah. Medical examiner did it when the J.P. ordered an autopsy. It matches Redford's blood type, all right. He ought to have a full autopsy report in an hour or so. Uh, Captain Stinson ought to be here by then. Good. I got my deputies posted around, but uh, extra hands will be a help in case of trouble. The town looks peaceful enough. Mm, news hasn't been out long. We couldn't keep it quiet after the medical examiner had the body brought in the funeral home, though. Where are you keeping Lucifer? Oh, that's him in the bunk in the cell, back at the end of the block there. No other prisoners? I had them all moved up into the tank upstairs. Good idea. A statement says Lucifer worked on the Redford farm all his life. Yeah. Yeah, started there when Mike's grandfather owned the place and just stayed on. Oh, Lucifer must have gone crazy or something, Jace. He's had a good home out there. Then he turns and bites the hand that feeds him. That's happened before. I know, but... Uh... Uh, Lucifer never gave you any trouble before this, you said. No, no, nothing. Well, unless you want to count a little row he got in the last summer. Didn't amount to much. What was it? Oh, Lucifer hit somebody with a shovel. Some wandering farmhand that worked out at Redford for a few days. Him and Lucifer were cleaning out a pig pen, it seems. And this migratory started cussing Mike Redford. Lucifer told him to shut up. The guy wouldn't. So Lucifer clipped him with a shovel. That's the way the story come out when they brought Lucifer up before the judge. The judge fined him $25, and Redford paid the fine for him and took the old man home. Sounds like Redford and old Lucifer were pretty close. Oh, Redford always treated them square. What you just told me doesn't fit in with this statement you got from Lucifer last night. What do you mean? Last summer, he hit a migratory for cussing Redford. Yeah. But look here. On page two of this statement, Lucifer says, I had a grudge in for Mr. Redford ever since his pappy died, and he come to be my boss eight years ago. I didn't like him, and I made up my mind I'd kill him. It doesn't fit, does it? If this statement were true, Lucifer wouldn't have been up before a judge for defending Redford last summer. Howdy, Jase. Took your horse out of the trailer and wanted him. Thanks, Sam. Sheriff Lucifer's grandson Chad's out in the hall. Wants to know if he can see the old man. Just for a minute, please, Mr. Sheriff. Well, I guess it won't hurt none. Come on. Got a visitor for you, Lucifer. Grandson, Chad. No. Please don't let him in. I don't want to see him. Don't want to see nobody. Grandpa, we got to get you a lawyer or something. I don't want nothing. You go home. Don't talk to me. You just have home and stay there. Make him go, Sheriff. Make him go. You know you ought to go. That old man may be right. I don't want to see you no how. Don't ever come here again. But, but Grandpa, you got Never mind, Chad. Never mind. You get out like you said and go home. Come on. Sam, you'd better drive him out of town. Let him cut across the fields and through the hills to his place, but see that he stays off the highway when you leave him. Okay, Sheriff. Go ahead, Chad. <laughs> Where does he live, Chad? Up in the hills, about four miles behind Redford. <laughs> I'd like to take a ride out to Redford's place. If there is going to be any trouble here, it won't come before dark. Besides, I'd like to talk to Chad. I'm going to catch Sam and ride with him. Yeah, I'll uh, see if I can stop him from the window. Sam? Yes, Sheriff? Wait a minute. Ranger's going to ride out with you. Okay. He's waiting, Jace. There's a deputy guard in the place out there, making sure nothing's touched until we get photographed. Good. Thanks. Mr. Ranger, what are you going out there for? I told the sheriff everything, sir. No need for you to be going out there. Maybe there's no need for you being behind those bars either, Lucifer. I'd like to make sure. <laughs> few peculiar marks on Chad's face in the sheriff's office, and in the car I got a chance to see him close up. They looked like scratch marks, and the edge of a dirty bandage showed beneath the frayed cuff of his shirt. You took a full chance walking into town, Chad. People are mighty hot about Redford getting killed. My grandpa wouldn't never kill him. One who'd know that best is your grandpa. He says he did kill him. Came in with Redford's blood over him. Yeah, an awful lot of Redford's blood, judging by the clothes the sheriff is holding. Where were you last night, Chad? I was home, back in the hills. Anybody with you who can verify that? I said, was anybody with you? Uh, no, I was alone. What do you mean, alone? Ain't your wife there? Wasn't she with you? Well, I wasn't at the shack. I was just around it. Doing what? Just walking around, that's all. Is that how your face got scratched up, walking around in the dark? One of your eyes looks kind of puffy, too, like you got hit. Uh, I got that chopping wood. A piece of kindling flew up and hit me. A piece of kindling hit you on the wrist, too? Pull that sleeve of your shirt up. 
I gotta cut that. That's all, Jessica. How'd you get it? Come on, Chad. Your place is only a mile up behind Redford's. Were you on the Redford place at all yesterday? Sure. But not last night. Only in the afternoon. What were you doing there? I just went by to see my grandpa, that's all. About what? To get to lend us some money. He give it to you? No. Why not, Chad? You've been mooching on the old man for years. He never turns you down for anything. Why didn't he give you the money? Because Mr. Redford, he saw us talking and he come out the house. He told Grandpa not to give me it. He said I was no counter. I'd be in and moan and not burn for my old man. Mr. Redford, he ain't never liked me. Told me to get off the place. I didn't want no trouble, so, so I got and you just walked around in the hills near your house without going inside where your wife could see you, huh? I don't like the smell of that story, Chad. Maybe you never left Redford's place. I did, I tell you. Honest, Mr. Sam, Mr. Ranger, my wife can tell you that. I did go home last night for a minute. I left the house because me and my wife had a fight. Hmm, nothing new about that. She got mad when I didn't bring no money back. We went round and round, and she threw something at me, and I hit her, and she scratched me up and cut my arm with a bread knife. That's when I run out. You didn't go back to Redford's after that? No, sir. I swear, I never did go back. Eh, here's the best place for you to get out, Chad. Got anything else you want to ask me, Jace? No. All right, Chad. You can go. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm just wondering if the old man couldn't be covering up for him. You think he was lying about that fight with his wife? Could be. Oh, his women does have a temper. They had it out hot and heavy before. How does he make a living back in the hills? Well, he don't. They live in an abandoned shack up there. He couldn't pay rent no place, and he ain't worth his salt. When he first got married, he tried to move his woman and himself into Lucifer's place, but Redford wouldn't have it no how. If anybody was toting a grudge against Redford, I'd bet on Chad, not old Lucifer. It's a cinch somebody was toting one, or Redford wouldn't be dead. actions hadn't fit into the usual crime pattern, and when we got to the Redford house, the pattern became even more jumbled. Except for the body having been moved, everything was left as the sheriff had found it. The body was laying right here, Jace. You can see the stain on the rug. Yeah. Furniture knocked around. Must have been quite a fight. A broken bottle over here. Yeah, the sheriff figured that's what finally knocked Redford out. Then he got shot while he was out cold. What made the sheriff so sure of that? Well, the body. Bullet fired right into the head from close up. Burns on the face. And no blood around except that, that one spot on the floor. And those handprints Lucifer left on the furniture and the wallpaper. And those handprints are what bother me most. Why? If Lucifer shot Redford, why didn't he just back off and get out of here? How'd he get blood all over him? And why'd he smear it all over everything like a kid with a ten-cent tube of red paint? Yeah, I see what you mean. It does seem like it was kind of deliberate. Do you think an old man like Lucifer could have wrecked half this room fighting a younger man like Redford? Ranger, I guess the sheriff and me didn't think of a lot of things. Now that you're pointing them out. It's not your fault. You thought you had a clear case and a confession. That makes it easy to overlook things. Young fellow like Chad might have put up quite a fight with Redford. What about the gun Redford was killed with? Well, we haven't got it. Lucifer said he threw it in some bushes on the way into town. Couldn't tell us where. Weapon might have been a 32 or 38. Autopsy will tell us when we get the slug. All right. Let's get back to town. If the old man is covering up for his grandson, how are we going to break him down if he keeps on... Wait saying... a minute, Sam. Hmm? Look at this. On the cupboard. What? Two whiskey glasses. Yeah. And both of them full. Ring on the wood here shows where the bottle was standing. Looks like Redford poured two drinks. One for himself and one for somebody else. But they didn't get to drink them. Fight probably started before they got a chance to bend elbows. We know the bottle was used to knock Redford out. Hey, that kicks a hole in what we've been thinking. A big hole. Who was Redford drinking with? It's a cinch it wasn't Chad. Redford ordered him off the place. An old man's confession must be on the level. No, it isn't, Sam, because it's not likely Redford would have been having loose friend for a drink either. There was somebody else here. Somebody who either killed Redford or saw who did. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. 
We continue now with tonight's case, Pressure, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. Sam and I headed back for town. The streets were crowded but quiet the way they should be on a Sunday afternoon. But there was a tension we could feel. We made one stop at the funeral parlor for a look at Redford's body. Medical examiner was just finishing. Well, you can see, like I said, the bullet was fired from close up. Yeah. What'd you find, Doc? Well, he'd been struck on the head with blunt object and shot through the brain at close range. I had a bullet here. You want that, of course? Please. There you are. Thanks. Thirty-two twenty caliber. I'd give a lot to get my hands on the gun this came out of. Lucifer said he ditched the gun. Yeah, Lucifer said a lot of things. And slugs flattened out plenty. Usually so. I notice, eh? There's something else to notice, too. On the body. The burned area around the wound. Well, what, what about it? Ought to be some powder grains buried in the flesh. But there aren't. None that I can see. None that I can see, either. How about that, Doc? No. No, it is an unusual wound. When Lucifer told you he threw the gun away, did he mention what kind of a gun, Sam? Mm. No, why? Because this may give us a chance to trip him up. This bullet didn't come from a small weapon. It came from a thirty two twenty caliber rifle. Well, how can you tell that without a ballistic check? Mm, for one thing, the way the slugs flattened out. Rifle has a couple of hundred pounds greater impact than a sidearm. You mean plowing through a skull and flatten it plenty? Yeah, but there's another thing about a close-range rifle shot. It leaves a burn, but no powder grains in the skin. A revolver will leave powder grains every time. That makes sense, Doc? Yes, it does. With a revolver, the explosion of the powder in the shell is only a couple inches away from a point-blank target. But with a rifle, well, there's length of the barrel, you know. Here. Here's my report if you're headed for the sheriff's office. We drop it off for you. So long. So long, Doc. Goodbye. I'm learning a lot as we go along here, James. There's still something we both got to learn. Who killed Mike Redford? There were a couple of ranger cars outside the jail when we got there. Men from my company were standing casually at points along the street. But they weren't as casual as they looked. The jail was carefully circled and they commanded all approaches. Captain Stinson was inside with the sheriff. Grace... The sheriff tells me you're not satisfied with Lucifer's confession. That's right, Captain. How about bringing Lucifer out here for a minute, Sheriff? Sure thing. Things are going to start blowing around here after sundown, Jason. I know. I felt it all the way through town. All it needs is some hothead to start it off. Well, if it starts, we'll stop it. Well, maybe there won't be no trouble. Mm, town's pretty crowded, Sam. A lot of cars coming in. Come out here, Lucifer. Yeah, the town's always crowded on Sunday. They're not ganging up anyplace. Well, that can come later. But there's one sign of trouble you can't ignore. Take a look out that window. There's not a woman in sight all the way down Main Street. The men are coming in the room. Here he is, James. Thanks, Sheriff. Lucifer, you said you killed Redford and then threw the gun away. That's the honest truth, Mr. Ranger. Where'd you throw it? I don't remember, sir. Was it a gun like this one in my holster? Well, was it? Maybe. Guns look all the same to me. Oh, was it about the size of this one? All guns are about that size, sir. Not all guns, Lucifer. You're not telling me the truth. Because Redford wasn't killed with this kind of a gun. He was killed with a rifle. You're covering up for Chad. No, sir, no, sir. Chad had nothing to do with it. It was me, just me. Listen to me, Lucifer. You think Chad killed Redford, but I don't. If you want to help him, open up and tell the truth. Oh, Chad couldn't have done it. He left the place when Mr. Redford ran him off. Honest, I see him leave. Then what happened? I went to my house. And after it got dark, there was a shot, a gunshot. It came from Mr. Redford's house. I left my place, run over to see if anything was wrong, and... and... <laughs> Redford was dead when you found him. Then how did he get blood all over him, Jase? He'll tell you, Sheriff. Go on, Lucifer. I lift him a little to hold his head in my lap. I beg him to talk to him, to say something to old Lucifer. I've known him since he was a little boy. I watched him grow. <laughs> But when you found him there, you thought Chad had sneaked back to kill him. Huh? I didn't know what to think. Why should you come up on no good like Chad? He is my own flesh, Chad. Blood is thicker than water. How do you know Chad isn't the killer, Jace? Two full whiskey glasses indicated that Redford was drinking with the man who killed him. And he wouldn't be drinking with Chad, Sheriff. It ain't the... Come in. Howdy, Sheriff. Yeah. Come on, Rangers. Come in. 
What's on your mind, Flam? Oh, well, some of the men have been talking around town, Sheriff. They sort of appointed me to come up and see you. Well, you just been to the funeral home to see Mike Redford. What's left of him? Mike was my neighbor and pretty good friend, too. Glad that you've come to tell me, Flam? No, not exactly. Looks like you're expecting some trouble, and some of us thought we'd like to volunteer to help you. We could take over the guard trick on jail for tonight so you and the rangers can get some rest. You can go back and tell the boys we're not tired, Flam. And while you're at it, tell them Lucifer didn't kill Redford. Words around that Lucifer confessed, Ranger. It was a mistake, Mr. Flam. What I said wasn't true. Well, fine. Then you don't have to stay here, Lucifer. Why don't you go home, back to Redford's farm? He's staying here. Why, if he got nothing to hold him on? Protective custody. And that means just what it says, Flam. He'll be protected. You can go now. All right, Sheriff. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Flam. Yeah, Captain? If you should see any men around who look like they're fixing to start some trouble, do us a favor. And do them a favor, too. Tell them to go home. Sure, Captain. I'll tell them. Sam, lock Lucifer up again, will you? Sure. Come on, Lucifer. Yes, sir. Flam looks like he may be the man who sparked that crowd. Yeah. Flam and Redford were mighty close. Sheriff, we've got to move Lucifer out of the county for safekeeping. If Flam gets a mob stood up at night, anything can happen, and a few people are liable to get killed. He's safer in here than he'd be if we took him outside. Not if they fire this building. We'll move him right after sundown. How? Where? Seems to me the best place would be some small-town lockup across the county line where nobody'd know him and nobody'd think of looking for him. That's what I had in mind. Sam? Yeah, Captain? Get Jace's horse, Charcoal, out of his trailer. Pick up two more horses and take them all to the field south of town. Hobble them and stash the saddles away under cover so you'll know where they are later. Okay. After you leave them, on the way back, you can drop the word that we're moving Lucifer out of here tonight. You mean you want the whole town to know it? They won't know as much as they'll think they know, Sheriff. After dark, you and I can make a run in my car. They'll figure we're moving Lucifer, and they'll all make a run to block us. Meanwhile, Jace and Sam can slip him out the back and make for the horses in the field. After that, Jace, it's up to you. It's 11 miles cross-country to Hill's Crossing. There's a lock up there. See that nobody stops you from getting home to it. We waited until dark without turning on a light in the building. Then Captain Stinson, the sheriff, took one of the deputies covered with a blanket and made a run for the captain's car, while Sam and I took Lucifer out the back. We ran across the field where the horses had been left and began to saddle them. Listen. Sounds like the sheriff and your captain have hit trouble, Jace. Probably somebody tried to block the road and kept scaring them off. Hurry with that last one. Yeah, ready to go, Jase. After I take this one hobble off. Good. Come on, Lucifer. I'll give you a boost. Yes, sir. Here's charcoal, Jase. Ready to run. Thanks. Steady, boy. You set, Sam? As soon as it gets mounted, no more shooting. No. Captain discourages them quick. Yeah, but by now that crowd may know they ain't got Lucifer in the car. You like to do them any good. This is going to be a rough ride for you, Lucifer. Let us know if you want to slow up or stop. I'll be all right, sir. Good. Let's ride. Up, Charlie. Get up, boy. Come on. Just hang on the horn, Lucifer. Yes, sir. Come on, boy. Up. When we got to Hill's Crossing, the town was dark and sleeping, except for a couple of rangers who'd been sent down to take over guarding Lucifer. Once he was safe under lock and key, Sam and I started the ride back to Lingua. Hey, you're cutting the wrong way, James. We should turn down that valley to Lingua. I know it. We're not heading back for town yet. I want to make one more stop. Where? Back to the Redford Farm again? That's not much out of the way. Getting Lucifer safe was only part of the job. we still got to find out who killed Redford. That means we've got to find out who was drinking with him. If there was anybody. Lucifer said Redford didn't have any visitors yesterday. He said he didn't see any visitor. That doesn't prove anything. He'd have been sure to see a car if one had driven in. His shack's near the farm road. He, even if he'd been inside, he'd have heard it. Maybe the visitor didn't use the road. Might have come in on foot or mounted from another side of the farmhouse. I guess that could be all right. Probably put his horse in the barn or the back corral. That'd keep Lucifer from knowing anybody was in the house. There's an old wagon road the other side of that grove of trees we're coming to. We'll have easier riding once we get over there. Hold it, Sam. Huh? Oh, whoa, Charky. Oh, boy. Hey, what's the... Shh. Listen. Hounds. And they're on trail. Look, over there in the hill. Hey, something's on fire. Jace, that's right up behind Redford's place. Isn't that where Lucifer's grandson, Chad, lives? Yeah. 
What do you suppose going on up there? Somebody wants blood. They didn't get it from Lucifer, so they're running down his family. Come on. Up, Chuck. Up, yeah, boy. That shack is really flaming, Jason. If they trapped him in there, he's had it. They haven't got him yet. Those dogs are still after something. He's gone. We raked our horses all the way. We'd been about a mile off when the blaze started. When we reached the shack, it was a flaming heap on the ground. We saw a woman staring at it in a daze. She must have been Chad's wife. She wasn't harmed, so we took off after the sound of the dogs. Listen to that, Chase. They got Chad treated. They wouldn't sound off like that. Yeah, they're just through this thicket. All right. Just crawl feet on that tree and rake it till he falls. No, no, Mrs. Lamb. I ain't got nothing. Hold it, Lamb. You and whoever's with you. Oh, boy. Who? who? Mr. Lazen, they're trying to kill me. Nobody's going to kill you, Chad. You men, grab your hounds and shut them up. You're all under arrest, and that includes you, Flam. What for? We were just doing a little night hunting. The dogs treat Chad here by mistake. The dogs didn't set fire to his shack, and arson's a crime. Look, Ranger, he killed my neighbor. Why'd you switch to him? Because you couldn't get your hands on old Lucifer? They were in it together. Redford ordered Chad off the place yesterday. Did you tell him that, Chad? No, sir. I didn't tell nobody but you. And you didn't get it from Lucifer, Flam, because you never got near him. So how do you know? Who told you Redford chewed him out? Nobody had to tell me. I was visiting Radford at the house. He saw Chad on a place and went out and ordered him off. But after I left, him or the old man sneaked in and killed Mike. Throw that rifle over here, Flam. Why? Never mind why. Just throw it over. And be careful how you throw it. We're willing to leave here, peaceful. Just a hunting weapon. A thirty-two twenty hunting weapon. Just like the one that killed Mike Redford. For the last time, Flam, throw it over. Come and get it. Oh. Hands off those guns, the rest of you. Oh. That's better. Now gather in and pick up your pal, Flam. You followed him out here, you can tote him back. You hit me. I'm hurt bad. Yeah, you just winged. It's a better break than you gave Redford when you killed him. It was self-defense. I killed him in self-defense. Sure. Well, he was knocked out after you hit him with that whiskey bottle. Should have finished your drink, Flam. You'll never see another glass of whiskey as expensive as that one. Jack Flam confessed to the murder of Mike Radford. His statement disclosed that the killing had been the result of an argument over ownership of a strip of land between his farm and Radford's. Flam was sentenced to life imprisonment. Four other men convicted of armed participation in the attempted lynching of old Lucifer and his grandson, Chad, were given prescribed terms in the county jail. And now, here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae. There are thousands of people living today who have survived only because of the Red Cross. These people will never have to be reminded of its great service to humanity. But this year, the Red Cross drive has fallen short of its needed goal. So give to the Red Cross, won't you? And invest in humanity. Good night, folks. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of... The Texas Rangers! currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Frenchie. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Will Wright, Herb Vigran, Ernie Whitman, Roy Glenn, Bill Conrad, and Byron Kane. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murkoff, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keith. This is Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Coming up next on NBC, it's the $64 question. Accordion-playing quiz master Phil Baker gathers another group of contestants around the microphone to play your favorite quiz game. And there are prizes for the lucky participants and excitement and laughs for you at home. 
Join Phil Baker now as he asks America's favorite question, the $64 question on NBC. 